get behind it. They've got a little bit of uh, a dip there in the, in the, uh, the shoreline to get through. But uh, I'd imagine these ladies will be finding a good line as they swim towards that first buoy. A bit of a current this morning. The uh, swimmer's getting pushed a bit to the, uh, to the left. And we're expecting our guys to be probably coming back in the back. down in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in July. Mm -hmm. So uh, the top six uh, men here and top six women will go down to Rio de Janeiro to uh, represent the United States military. Mm -hmm. Now if I remember correctly, last year the Air Force also won the team title here. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, last year uh, the Air Force uh, won the team title both for both the men and the women. Uh -huh. So. Uh, we got a lot riding on this year, hoping to repeat. Right. We'll have to see how the scores. Yeah, how's it looking up. so far? I've seen quite a few uh, Air Force people. Absolutely, we got a few coming in. I think our top competition is going to be Navy. And to tell you the truth, at the end of the day, it comes down to our sixth place guy versus their sixth place guy, and who beats who. Right. So, so it's going to be a very tight race. Mm -hmm. Very tight race. All the services really bring out their best for this race. Now you talk about the military games, but uh, you guys also look uh, cast an eye toward the Olympics when you're into this type of uh, training, don't you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that's uh, that's kind of my long-term goal is the 2012 Olympic Games. So you know hopefully over. The Well, here we are with uh, Karen Lynn and Jim O'Neill. Right. Uh, these are the two people that uh, made this whole thing possible. Um, How did you feel after the performance tonight and seeing just everybody instantaneously get up and give that kind of, what I would say is a standing ovation? Yeah, the um, last, really, uh, since we started previewing, that's been happening, and, and sometimes, People do that as a sort of knee-jerk reaction, but the very first preview and through to tonight, you can tell that it's very genuine, that people are really genuinely moved by the piece, and so it's very gratifying. And the acting was absolutely spectacular. Yeah, we feel that way. It was a very long audition process, actually, for this really? show. Yes, in fact, Daniel, who plays the lead, who really is 17, the yeah. age of Hallie, uh, we brought him back four times because he's such a, a good, sweet soul. And uh, Brian, the director, really wanted that vulnerable quality. But it was very difficult for him because he's such a nice person to find the sort of venom that Hallie has that comes from kind of pain or fear and uh, but he's such a great actor he he kind of kept moving towards that but Brian kept bringing him back because he wanted to combine both that lovely vulnerable sweetness and the you know the power that's needed which he does bring to it. Well you know it's beautiful for us to get back here and be part of this scene yeah, and see so this you know it's been uh, how many years now are you at? Sheldon Brown the publisher of Venture Breeze and uh, we're here with Helen Yunker, who makes a tremendous contribution to the arts in Ventura, one of our great saviors. And uh, maybe Helen can tell us her relationship with the Rubicon and how they honor her. Well, uh, I guess it's so. When they first came online and I joined, and uh, it was just a, a marvelous thing to have a live theater of that caliber come to Ventura. And I don't know, I got involved with the Grand Doms, and then financially I helped them buy the building, and they rewarded me by naming it the Helen Yunker Auditorium or Performance Hall, I forget which. 
and it all devolved into almost like a family relationship between or amongst all of us, you know. And uh, I haven't missed a performance yet. In fact, I usually go for the opening night and then the, and the, and the final performance. So then I can write up my uh, uh, review and tell everybody how wonderful they are. And, and, and you should never we, miss. Yeah. We were just in the Helen Yunker can, room. Can I ask a question? Uh -huh. and, uh, and... Hi there, my name is Johanna Spinks. I am a portrait artist working at the Bell Arts Factory. Uh, I'm embarking on a new art project this year and next with the Ventura Breeze and uh, the publisher Sheldon Brown to paint 52 people from the town of Ventura, a portrait sketch that is done from life in a single two to three hour sitting. Um, the plan is really to uh, paint the face of Ventura as it is currently, people from all walks of life, from uh, Jolene McBee, who owns the Vagabond Inn and has done for 40 years odd, to um, you know the oldest firefighter in Ventura, um, people doing good deeds, um, nominated by the readership of The Breeze or chosen um, by Sheldon and I. Uh, I'm a classically trained uh, portrait artist working primarily in oils. Um, I've trained at the Art Students League of New York and the National Academy of Design New York with my mentor, who is Everett Raymond Kinsler. He has, uh, to this date, painted seven American presidents in his lifetime and uh, has numerous pieces in the Smithsonian. So I'm, I'm very lucky to have had his influence, and I don't think I would be able to do a project like this if um, I hadn't had some of his teachings. He's very important in my life. Amigos de Katy, continuamos aquí en el lobby del hotel del Crown Plaza de Ventura y nada más ni nada menos nos encontramos con una gran sorpresa. What a great surprise. And I'm going to let you uh, him introduce himself, okay? My name is Bob McNabb. Bob McNabb. All star from the national team from England. In the years of the 68 to 70, 72? Yeah, correct, yeah. Your uh, teammates at those times? Well, the England team was, uh, at the time, was the 66 World Cup champions, which I did not participate. I got in the England team during their reign. Hi, this is Bill Frank with KADY-TV, and I'm reporting from the Ronald Reagan Library, and we're here for the symposium led by Tom Brokaw. I'm joined by Dr. Callahan of the department that is putting on this symposium. Welcome, Dr. Callahan. How are oh, you? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you? Terrific, and I want to thank you for putting this on. Tell me, you have been involved with every symposium that, that the USC has put on? With each of the panel for the two days of the symposium, I've either chaired a panel or attended the other panels. Oh, that's phenomenal. And how's the attendance been for the symposium? Uh, it's really been a very powerful intergenerational attendance. You have graduate students who were born after Ronald Reagan had finished his term, and you've had people like Ralph Bledsoe and Peter Hannaford who knew President Reagan when he was Governor Reagan. And so that mix is really what a university does well, as well as the exchange of ideas between academics and researchers and people who worked in the White House. So from my point of view, the attendance and the participation in the conference has been great. Oh, that is wonderful to hear. Now, speaking of the exchange of information, what are you hoping to hear this afternoon with Mr. Brokaw's panel? Well, Tom actually just, uh, Mr. Brokaw does a great job of uh, really conveying the, the speech <laughs> later Now, whoever mentioned outside in the crowd, thank you for the, for the speech comment. I actually have one. 
Uh, first and foremost, I do want to thank the citizens in Oxnard for your faith and trust and all the community support and warm welcomes that I've received. Um, to, to everyone from every perspective, every ethnicity, every gender, every everything. So that warm welcome is extremely helpful and I'm very much appreciative too. To the men and women who are standing behind me, Mayor Holden, Mayor Pro Tem Pinkard, to Councilwoman Ramirez, Councilman McDonald and Councilman Flynn, they've all been warm and welcoming to me as well. Uh, welcoming and soliciting support. And welcome to Mr. Bill's Cartoon Classics here on KDTV.com, where we play cartoons from the 1940s, the 1950s, and the 1960s. Well, let's go back into the archives and pull one up from the Fleischer Studios. It's Gabby and two for the zoo on KDTV.com and Mr. Bill's Cartoon Classics. Hi, this is Bill Frank with KADY TV, and I'm here for my exclusive interview with Steve Forbes. We're at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley, California, where Mr. Forbes has just spoken to a group of about 1,100 people who were there to hear what he had to say on four very important topics. He spoke on monetary policy, taxation, the need for smaller government, and fewer regulations as well. After his speech, he was escorted by a team off to a reception, a private reception, and that's where we're going to meet him today to talk not only about his speech, but we want to talk about current events as well. And here he comes. He's on his way up to join us right now. I'm looking forward to this interview. Hi, Steve. How are you? Thank you again for doing this. See you. Appreciate it. I know this is a long day. I'm going to keep this to just two simple questions okay. so we don't tax you any more than we have to. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I don't like taxes. No, I know you don't. <laughs> exactly. Well said. All right. So I am joined by Steve Forbes, who is here speaking at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley. Mr. Forbes, a wonderful speech. You touched on four key areas. You talked about taxation, limiting the size of government, monetary policy, and fewer regulations. I would like you to connect the dots for my listeners, if you would, please, between two very important and timely events. As you know, there was rioting in Egypt today, the younger class there, very upset with the government, rising food prices. I think the prices have shot up 36% in the last 12 months. Tell me, what responsibility does the United States Federal Reserve have in creating some of this overseas a hostility that we're seeing? Well, in terms of uh, the rise in food prices around the world, it uh, derives, uh, absolutely connected to what the Federal Reserve has done. When you print too much money, commodity prices go up, which means higher food prices, higher heating prices, higher gasoline prices. And in poor countries, uh, that hits people particularly hard because they have nothing to fall back on. And a large portion, portion of their income does go for food, so uh, they get uh, hit hard. Now, Egypt had other political problems, obviously, but uh, this is what set the fire off, was the Federal Reserve printing too much money. There you go. And now you are an expert not only in finance and corporate leadership, but of course you're an expert in politics as well, having run twice for the Republican nomination in 1996 and in 2000. So as a political insider, I'm going to ask you to give us a glimpse into the crystal ball. Who do you see as some of the front runners for the Republican nomination in 2012 against President Barack Obama? Well, for the first time in a long time, uh, you have a truly open field. There is no my turn candidate. So obviously Governor Romney is going to be running hard. I think Newt's going to run. Uh, perhaps Governor Huckabee's going to run. I think you're going to see Governor Pawlenty of Minnesota. Governor Daniels of uh, Indiana may do it. Uh, Governor Barber of Mississippi may do it. I don't know what Jim DeMint's going to do. I don't know what Sarah Palin's going to do, but it's going to be a long list. And uh, so I think this year you're going to see a lot of winnowing down. But I know at least 30 people are looking at the thing. Well, shameless plug for the Ronald Reagan Library. May of this year, we're going to have the first of the presidential debates right here. So um, I hope that you'll be out here and maybe join us for that. Well, I'm certainly going to uh, look at the debate either here or in, uh, on the uh, web because uh, that'll be the first real view people have of who's going to be running in 2012. That's great. We've been talking to Steve Forbes, everybody, here at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley. This is Bill Frank for KADY-TV. And I was just mentioning she could smell the ocean air here. And honestly, this is what makes Oxnard so great when it comes to soil and, and temperature. There are five Mediterraneans in the world. 
obviously the one in Europe, which we all know about. And then the only other one in the northern hemisphere is where we're standing now. The three in the southern hemisphere are Western Australia, Santiago, Chile, and South Africa. And those regions grow more diversity, more higher yields, and uh, just have a temperate climate that makes growing I, how do you explain it? If people, I think, I don't know if I told you this, people ask me all the time, how do I farm organically? How do I do it? And I go, well, I farm in paradise. So <laughs> it makes it a little easier. <laughs> this is, uh, my son was in Calabasas yesterday. Um, he said it was 92 there in Calabasas. <laughs> this ocean breeze, does anyone live on the other side of the Caneo grade? Do you, do, you live in... Agora. Yeah. So what's the temperature in Agora? Nice. <laughs> you know what? You're still in the Mediterranean. Yeah, of course. But it is all about education, like anything. It's always going to be that. And we're trying to grow the right way. The way A lot of this stuff is the way we used to farm. And uh, it, to me, it is about taking three steps back to go one step forward. Okay. Have a good one. See you then. So, welcome to my studio. It's small, but it's home, and uh, I really enjoy this space, and I'm very grateful to Josh Addison uh, from Bell Arts for putting on this great art area for us. Um, Maybe I'll just show you some of the things that I'm working on right now. Uh, this is the beginning of the wall for the face of Ventura. We have painted um, six uh, sitters so far out of the 52, and we are doing uh, the seventh today. Um, as I said, they're all done from life um, in about two to three hours to start starting to finish. Um, and then uh, right here behind Behind me, I'm working on a portrait of Charles Lawton, the um, British character actor, and that is for the Players Club in New York um, that I need to get finished by the end of this month. Um, it's my fifth portrait going into the Players Club. Um, I was very privileged to paint Norman Rockwell for that club, which was one of the highlights of my portrait career so far, and was my thinking also behind the face of Ventura project. Um, you know, I want these 52 squares to be mounted as one uh, big... And we're visiting with Vicki Murphy, who is the Chief Advancement Officer. Indeed. And so tell us a little bit about the 18th Annual Food and Wine Festival. Well, as you can see, it's a glorious day and an enormous turnout. We have um, 150 wineries here, uh, 30 microbreweries, and almost 100 restaurants. So uh, we're probably at about 5,000 people, maybe a little more. Um, it's a great day, a great event, and we love the venue here at Town Islands. And so where does this money go, and how does it it comes and helps us support the children that live uh, and are served by, by Casa Pacifica. We have a $25 million annual budget and we have to raise about 11% in private money. So um, we have a very small overhead, so almost all the money that's raised here today will go to support our children. And who's your buddy with? This is Archie. Archie is a six-year-old Newfoundland. He is the children's therapy dog at Casa Pacifica. Um, so he's here today to thank everyone himself for all of the support of helping the kids. George, it's been good to see. We've been knowing each other for some 20 years or so, and I'm, I'm still here. Uh, we have the Landon Pediatric Foundation. We have associated with Ventura County Medical Center and the Ventura County Health Care Agency. We now have a, a whole floor. We have third floor in our building with all kinds of pediatric subspecialists. I think you knew us 20 years ago when we were across the street. Yes. yes. What happens is uh, all these things take take money and uh, we get a certain amount from Medi-Cal and, and from the county, but the extra things that we need to send our diabetes team off to Colorado to meet with all the other diabetes teams, for our kids to have uh, opportunities in camp, for our nurses to keep uh, educated and our parents have a time to, to meet. We have uh, support groups that happen at night, and we've been very fortunate to be associated now with the Oxnard Salsa Festival. We're a, a, 
approached by Amanda Lynn to help sponsor Tim Flynn oh. and his Irish uh, dancing feet and turn them into salsa festival feet. So. With Lyman Air Ranch and Jonathan's, and you've got a big event coming up here in the month of June. Yes, we have the um, Ventura County Food Truck and Bocce Ball Festival. Um, we have about 15 plus food trucks attending the event, and then we're going to be doing also bocce tournaments as well. Um, and we're the exclusive creators to the Limonera property. So, food trucks, they're, they're becoming hugely popular here in Southern California. Correct. So, um, the thing is, is we wanted to get the food truck popularity here in into the Ventura County area. So, hence, we're doing this huge food truck and bocce ball festival. Can you kind of give us a sense as to what kind of foods are going to be re represented on these trucks? Tons of food, um, food um, trucks. We're having, um, we have dolls, we have um, sweet cakes, which is like a dessert truck. We have um, kebab trucks coming in. Um, oh gosh, there, there's a ton that I can't, you know, too many to name. All right, tell us a little bit about Jonathan's. Jonathan's, we're located in downtown Ventura. We're in the oldest commercial brick building in the area, um, built in 1877. We're a Mediterranean restaurant. Um, so we do all kinds of foods all over the Mediterranean, whether it's Greek, Spanish, Italian, um, Lebanese, the whole nine yards. You're right across from the mission in the old Pirano building. Correct, correct. So we've kept the, we've kept the building pretty much as is. Um, floors are still original, walls are still original, windows are still original, so pretty cool. All right, do you have a website? We do. It's www.jonathansatperanos.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that's Jocelyn from Jonathan's. From Health and Human Services from, uh, and also from the IRS talking about um, issues that face particularly small businesses in our communities right now with our recession. That's wonderful. That should be a nice big help for our small businesses in our community of Ventura County. There's a lot of misunderstanding about the health care law and the way that it can affect and actually benefit small businesses. So we'll have that as a part of our agenda, but also talking about the difficulty many small businesses are having finding credit. So we have resources to talk about that as well. And I want to hear from them, find out That's what wonderful. they're facing. Yes, and there's a nice group of business yes, owners, Logo, great. and they'll all be sharing their awesome. thoughts. They'll we'll be learning a great deal. Thank, I look you, so to the Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. This is the Light Brigade at Point Wainimi Lighthouse here in Port Wainimi. It's Saturday, July 16th. And what we wanna do here is to just um, honor the Lord with worship and prayer. And we have a gathering of Christians from all over Ventura County and all over California who are joining us today for this special occasion. The lighthouse has been in Port Wainimi for a good number of years. And it's just a place where light is focused and um, it's focused to honor and worship our Heavenly Father. Thanks. I'm Bill DeFoy with KDTV.com. It's Father's Day and they're having a classic car show here at the Marine Emporium Landing in the beautiful Channel Islands Harbor. Come join us. And we're visiting with Brendan from Brendan's Restaurant, relatively brand new in Camarillo. Yes, indeed. We opened in January, and uh, we're excited as a first-timer to be here supporting the community and the cause. Uh, I'm from Cork in Ireland, and we opened uh, up in January with uh, what we think is the most authentic Irish pub between L.A. and San Francisco. I've got to get over there. I'm a Camarillo resident. I've seen you from the freeway. So where are you located exactly? We're at 1755 East Haley Drive. It we used to be the Sizzler building for 20 years. Uh, it's pretty much an iconic building in the Camarillo community, but we're delighted to have the pub there. And what are your hours of operation? 11 o'clock in the morning to 1 o'clock, and at the weekends we're open till 2. So you can't go into an Irish restaurant and pub without some good beer. 
No, we sell a lot of Guinness and a lot of Smithix, Harp and Kilkenny, and we have our own beer called Gobshite. So today you're, uh, I smell corned beef and cabbage out here. Yes, we're doing our corned beef and cabbage sliders. They've quickly become famous. It's a take on an American favorite, but we're delighted to be able to serve them here and support the cause again. Well, Brendan, I hope to get by your restaurant real soon. Thank you very much for coming in. We appreciate your time. All right, Brendan, thank you very much. Exactly right, and we are here having fun. We're in the business of selling fun. That's what we do. We do comedy Wednesday through Sunday night, world-class comedy every weekend. I, I got a great comedian coming in, in a couple weeks, Dave Coulier, Uncle Joey from Full House. But always star comics every weekend. Always great fun times. Uh, we are here uh, telling people about our comedy club and telling people about my partner's wine bar in Ventura Harbor and his bakery on Main Street, uh, the Savory Bakery. And then my other partner and I have opened up a comedy venue on uh, Lindero Canyon in Westlake Village. I have another club in Valencia. We're spreading laughs and comedy all over Southern California. And we're here having fun at a great cause to raise some money for underprivileged kids. We're having fun. We're having excitement. We're telling people where they can go to get laughs, and that's what we're all about. Comedy every Wednesday through Sunday, right in the gorgeous Ventura Harbor, Ventura Harbor Comedy Club, and it's real easy, VenturaHarborComedyClub.com, or call us up, 644-1500, we're there every week, we're going to have you a good time, we guarantee every time you get there, even if you haven't heard of the comedian, you're going to walk out having fun, that's what we do. But you've traveled all over doing comedy yourself, is that correct? I have performed comedy all over the world. I have performed in seven uh, Canadian provinces in all 50 states and on cruise ships literally everywhere on the globe. Uh, I have uh, I've, I've, I started doing comedy clubs in L.A. 13 years ago in Valencia. This one we've had for three years, and now we've got one for a year over in the, the West Valley in, 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 uh, in Westlake Village now. We're having fun. We're, we're selling laughter. We're selling good times, and that's what we do. All right, the website, one more time. The website is VenturaHarborComedyClub.com. It'll tell you all the upcoming schedules, special events, and I'm also producing the first ever Ventura Comedy Festival, the second week of November. We're going to have comedy at the at the uh, majestic Ventura Theater at the top of the Crown Plaza Hotel at Ventura Harbor Comedy Club at Andres Wine and Tapas at the Creek and at Margarita Villa in the Harbor. with KADY TV and we're reporting from the Ronald Reagan Library here in Simi Valley, California and I am joined right now by the former chairman of the Republican Party for the city of Fresno, California, Don Watnick. Don, welcome. How are you today? I am outstanding. Thank you very much. It's great to see you, Bill. Well, it's good and to see you. It's wonderful to be in this facility which uh, I think is one of the finest 
in the country. It evokes all sorts of memories, doesn't it, of a yes. time gone by. So you have driven from Fresno to be here tonight to hear Steve Forbes speak, which I think is a testament to Mr. Forbes. I want to ask you, Don, after going all of this way, many hours in the car, what is it that you hope to learn from Mr. Forbes' talk tonight? Well, Steve is uh, an expert, of course, on, on finance, but more importantly, uh, he is a proponent of and I forget whether it's the fair tax or the flat tax. Flat tax. Uh, but I would like to hear more about that particularly. Uh, but there's an event or there's a happening in the world right now that I'm hoping that uh, Steve Frank, uh, Steve Forbes will. Concerns our community, Ventura County. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Uh Stensley. Pleased to see you again. <laughs> Thanks for having us here. And thanks for having a chat with us. I'm with the Ventura County Economic Development Collaborative. We're a public-private partnership that does consulting and lending and services for small businesses all over Ventura County. We're here today because of our passion to support small businesses. They're the entire job generators of the economy, the opportunity for increased wealth in the community is all generated by small businesses. We have services that we want to make sure that small business owners are aware of so we can help with their profitability on everything from access to capital to figuring out their cash flow to understanding their marketing plans. And we're here particularly tonight with Congresswoman Los Caps to talk about what is under new federal legislation, the health care uh, small business health care tax credit where small businesses who the community hopefully you can carry this legacy by telling people that come to uh, downtown come and visit us if you're an artist bring your art I'd like to share with you a you know, uh, good time again we have the cathedral in Mexico it's just sort of a sketch of that but there's so many things that, uh, that I see here the reflection of the sun when it hits at a certain time it becomes like a like a, just a, like, I don't know, something, something beautiful. So like shooting stars going in different directions. And then it changes. Then in the evening, you see a silhouette around the, the, the statue of, I mean, the, the painting of Guadalupe. But then there's something else. It's like a chalice on the right-hand side. It's a reflection of the light. But to me, I say, wow, this is incredible. All those things are signs of, of the light. You know, they're here with us, and we have to turn into the light. We have you know, the seen it before it was on this wall. And that is, it's just quite Thank exciting. So Thank let's give a hand to Robert. Robert Garcia, at least give him a hand for his incredible work of art. Uh, we are so grateful to have so many people with us. My name is uh, Reverend Edgar Mohorco. I'm the president of the National Police Clergy Council, and I'm the guy who handles all the gang intervention here in the county and actually a few other counties. Uh, and I'm really excited to be here. I think uh, also thank. Uh, some of the people at the clergy council that are here and my my staff uh, are present also in support of Robert and my family and I have my my daughter and CC Wave at least and my wife Marta my executive assistant my operations manager I have uh, Javi over there one of our gang intervention coordinators Karina I have support her. she's one of our consultants and she's also an artist she loves doing that for fun for fun and I hope I didn't miss anybody I have Henry does some of our case management but I want